What up? What up? It's your boy, Vox here. Um, This is part two of my guide to Goddess Story that has been requested a lot. I'm finally getting around to it. So part one, you can go back and check if you want to. That is my part one is the guide on how where to buy Goddess Story and how to buy it. Um, for if you are interested in collecting it, of where to go about that. Part two here is for those who are interested in selling their cards. So, um, over time, God Story has gotten more and more popular that there's actually a lot of sellers now, and there's a huge like selling platform for them. Um, I started way back when Maiden Party 1 was a Maiden Party 1 or Maiden Party 2, I think it was 2, just started coming out. So I've been doing this quite like a couple years, over two years or something. So I know some tricks here and there and how to do things right. Um, granted, I'm thankful I started when I did because I'm, <laughs> it sounds like bragging, but I'm technically one of the biggest God of Story sellers on eBay, especially. This is the main platform I'll be going over. Um, so I feel like I can get... I feel like I can give a little bit of advice of how to do it. You know, there's other sellers who, there is sellers who sell more than me. There's a lot of sellers who don't sell as much as me. It's just like a side hobby. I've grown so much that it's basically like a full on store at this point for me, you know? So hopefully I can give a little bit of insight on how you should go about this. Um,. Let's see, I'll do a little bit of disclaimers before I get into the video. One, I'm kind of doing this uh, on the fly, so if I happen to ramble a lot, that's uh, that's on me. <laughs> so some things might be explained a lot longer than they need to be. Two, I am going to... The video will be... Um, I will explain things in terms of... As if you're living in the U.S. In you uh, United States dollar... And typically, I'll do it in eBay because that's the main platform I do it. So I'll explain things kind of in my point of view of United States dollar, U.S. and uh, eBay platform here. So if you're outside the U.S., some of the things might still apply, but I'm just going to explain everything that way. So for us to go over here, get started. So there's different platforms of what you can sell on. So the biggest one, of course, which I personally think is the easiest and the best one, is eBay. Um, eBay has the largest um, consumer base. It has the most buyers. It's just very big overall. All right, so you got a lot of buyers. You got a lot of sellers. It's you get a lot of traffic. Um, the second option I would say would be Mercari. I technically do have a Mercari store. I have not listed anything since like September and it is February. <laughs> so Mercari, you can sell on there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. I prefer eBay only because Mercari, there's not as a huge consumer base to buy things um as you can see on ebay i've sold over thirty-five thousand items and i have like 760 followers for ads of right now on mercari i've sold i have 251 reviews and that's a mixture of me i've bought a lot off mercari so that's a mixture of buying and selling um i have not made as many sales you can see i guess i've made some sales here more than i thought um barely i made like you might get, like for me, I maybe get a Mercari sale once a month. Unlike, I get like 500 a month on eBay. So, it's an option if you prefer to do that. There is some benefits. Um, Mercari, everything is buy it now. There's no auction. So, you list something for the price that you want it. $15, you know. Um, one thing I really like about Mercari is that the buyer, once your item it shows delivered on tracking... The buyer has three days to confirm that they got the item or confirm that there's an issue with it. So if I deliver an item on on Monday, let's say it arrives for the buyer on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know if it counts Monday. Yeah, it should count Monday too. Mon let's just say it counts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Thursday. They have three days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I can't even count my days. So they have three days to confirm delivery and give you a review. If the buyer does not give a um, a review or confirms delivery and say the three days are up, the, the listing, the order is closed no matter what. So 
Um, and there's no returns. After an order is closed, you can't return it. That's what I really like. So if it is delivered, um, three days have passed, it's closed, done deal. You don't have to worry about returns or somebody on eBay saying, hey, this is so-and-so three weeks after you sold an item, you know. So it's a done deal after three days. That's one of the biggest benefits I like about Mercari. Um... They are also, they're very picky. Do not mention eBay at all on Mercari. Because there is a chat function that you can talk with other buyers and sellers. Like, hey, would you do a deal on this? Whatever. If they, Mercari staff, <laughs> they're not, based on stories I've heard, they are not very good. If you mention other platforms on here, they will straight up ban you, in, like, right away. I once had somebody mention eBay through the shop here saying, hey, I found your store on eBay. I thought, check this, Mercari. And I'm like, don't mention it. Don't don't mention eBay. They will ban you just for mentioning it. So, yeah, support on Mercari is awful. So, it's an option. All right. that's. I just want to say it's an option. They do another benefit. Um, the only reason I have a Mercari store is because eBay. In, a lot of these cards can be pretty sus. As you can see here, like, look at these cards. I'm not going to click on to show, but um, you can tell that some of them are a little sus. Um, eBay, that's a no-go. You may see buyers list sus cards on eBay. Don't do it. It's not worth the risk. I've done this long enough that I have had um, cards reported or taken down because they've been sus. And some of them were completely fine. They weren't even sus at all. That's the... That was the part that annoyed me is some of them were completely tame and they took them down because I think somebody reported them for whatever reason. So um, on eBay, do not list anything sus. You might see people do it and get away with it, but they will close your account. They will ba The ultimate decision on that is that they will take your account down. They will ban you and you can never sell on eBay again. Like you can't. I don't even know if you can... You might be able to still buy, but you cannot sell on eBay ever again if they ban your account. It got very close one time because I had like three reports within... Or three takedowns of items within like a few months of each other. And they said, this is your final warning. Um, if this happens again, you're going to get a three-day subs suspension. And then after that is basically a full ban. So that was back in like April of last year. So I changed my ways and... um did not list anything sus. They also said, even when I, what I tried to do was I would censor the cards. You know, I would put like an image over the sus part. They said that's still not allowed. They still count it as a takedown. So I'm just giving you a big warning. Do not list anything sus on eBay. If you want to risk it, go ahead. I don't do it. Mercari actually allows you to list sus on here. Um, for some reason, these are fine, but... Um, Mercari does allow you to list sus, which is the biggest benefit. The only thing is you should... They say you have to censor it. They allow censoring. I didn't censor any of these. <laughs> but if you put like an uh, image over this, they say that's perfectly fine. So that's the only reason I have a Mercari shop is to sell my sus cards. Anyway, enough talk about Mercari. That went way longer than I thought. So eBay. eBay is the main platform I suggest you should sell on. That's where everybody is. Um, that's the, you'll get the best, um, traffic to your store and everything, I suggest. Uh, there's also Discord. You can sell cards through Discord. I've done it a couple times where, you know, you could just message, someone will DM you like, hey, would you take $5 for this card? You give them $5, it's through PayPal, and you ship it out. You can do that. The only problem is what leads us into my next point is taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes. Uh, if you are doing this as a hobby and you plan and you think you're not going to sell that much, you might make like five sales or like maybe 20 sales in the whole year. You don't really have to worry about taxes too much. But if you plan to make this an actual like hobby and as try to be as big as me, I don't know, <laughs> not to be discouraging. I don't know if you'll be as big as me. I kind of have been doing this a long time. Um, <laughs> you you might you might actually be way better um but you will want to keep record of everything so if you sell through discord like say like i said you want to give someone five dollars through paypal and then they ship it through an envelope of a stamp the tax limit for 2024 is 
you need to report it on your taxes. You're supposed to report it anyway, but you have to report it if you make over $5,000, and I'm assuming it's still 200 sales. So if you make over $5,000 in sales and or sell 200 items, you need to report it for the taxes. And um, if you if you make a sale through Discord, you know, if you send someone $5, they don't take out taxes on that $5. So if you sell $5,000 through, Di through Discord and through PayPal, PayPal does not take out taxes for those orders. So you have to pay on those taxes and figure out how much you were supposed to set aside for those taxes. That's the biggest thing of why I like doing everything through eBay eBay automatically collects sales tax and all that business, and then they send it on your 1099 at the end of the year. I don't have to, if I did it straight through Discord and like through PayPal, I'd have to figure out the sales tax for everything, and it is, it's not worth it. So if someone wants to buy something through my Discord, through like my not safe for work channel, you know, um, I'll make an eBay listing that they can buy through. I, I'm not going to deal with the tax business. I, uh, yeah, it's, I just prefer eBay because it does it for you. And then you just report it at the end of the year. So that's the benefit of eBay. So also taxes keep a record of every single purchase you make and every amount of like shipping that you have to pay for and supplies. So every time you buy a Gata story or it doesn't even have to be Gata story. Anytime you buy an item, keep the receipt or print off the invoice for it. By the end of the year, I have a stack of, like, invoices. I swear it looks like a dictionary, you know, because <laughs> I buy so much. So every time you say you purchase something off AliExpress of Got a Story and you plan to sell it, keep print off the invoice and set it aside for the end of the year. It will help reduce your taxes amount tremendously. And... um keep a record of any supplies you buy. You want to keep them separate, like your cost of your goods and your supplies. And you also want to keep a track of how much shipping you uh, you spend. eBay does... Um, if you purchase eBay labels through eBay, um, that's what I do just because it's easy. They do keep track of, in the report, um, of how much shipping you pay. So it's not like... So you technically, if you keep track of it on your own, eBay also keeps track of it. So you have the same amount. Okay. But if you buy labels off of a like pirate ship or some like the post office or whatever that you have to keep that yourself, you know, eBay doesn't keep track of that. So overall, keep track of everything you purchase. It will help you out tons because last year when I, I had to do this for my taxes the first time last year, um, <laughs> I do it through TurboTax. I know some people hate TurboTax, but whatever. It's just easy for me. So I did it the first time last year. It said I owed $15,000 and I had a heart attack. I was like, I don't have that. And so after learning more about it and getting it down and I entered my cost of goods, my shipping, my supplies and everything, I only had to pay $3,000 at the end of the year. And I was like, oh, sure, I can do that. That made me feel so much better. When I signed at 15000 it scared the crap out of me. So I was able to knock it down $12,000. So you definitely want to keep track of everything. It is worth it. So that's that. So eBay. Um, as we can see here, this is my little shop that we got going on here. Um, I'll get into how to listing stuff now and such. So here's my shop. Um, you'll learn... On your own, you have to learn on your own how to set up to make it look nice. Mine needs to be updated. These images are so bad and everything. Um, for listing items, it comes down to your preference. I do mainly auction listings. Um, I do a good chunk of buy it now too, but I do a lot of auction because the only reason I do auction is because I open up cards every week for uh twitch and stuff so i need a constant income to pay for the cards every week if i didn't stream i probably would just do buy it now completely um auction does have some benefits um some cards will sell for a lot more than i predict like if i go back to 
my buy it now here. And we take a look at this stuff. So, um, I've listed the these love diary cards have been doing pretty well. So these love diary cards, I have them all all the common SSR cards listed for two forty nine because I have a bunch of them. Um, see, I've already sold eight of them. This, they've been pretty popular. So. I have sold these on auction before, and they have gone for more than two forty nine. I have had one sell for like ten dollars before, so you can take the risk of doing an auction, and an item might end for ten dollars. It might end up three times the price you think. It also could end up for ninety nine cents, is which I start my listings at. I have so many of these that I just listed them as a flat price to get rid of them. So typically I do auction because there's a lot of times cars will sell for more than I think. They'll sell for like $20 when I would buy it now. I would have listed it for like $4, you know. So there's benefits to both of them. So if we if we are going to list an auction card here, go through the process of verifying a, I'm a human, yes. eBay does this all the time. So if we look at one card here as a basic example, uh, this is kind of newish. So to create a listing of what I do, um, it's a lot easier once you already create a listing. So once you create your first initial listing, you put in like your specifics and stuff. I save that and I save that as like a basic template that has like my basic um info description filled out that's the same for every listing um i know specifics don't really matter too much i mean as long as i have like got a story in here and i just have like anime it really actually i think most of the time it's chinese not japanese but whatever um i know specifics honestly in my opinion they don't matter that much these you can fill out there's like a million options in the listing. You can fill this out as much as you want. I don't think these matter that much. I have not seen a difference in sales if I fill this out or not as much. So I feel like it doesn't make a huge deal. But once you create your first listing, um, what I typically do to list much faster is if you click on it like this. See, here's your listing. If you go up to sell similar... Sell similar brings up the same exact listing like it is. You know, see, you already have your title pre-filled in. You already have your item specifics of the couple little things I have filled out. My description that I have here, um, custom already saved, appears all up, up in here. The price is exactly the same. Starts at $0.99 cents for seven days. Everything's exactly the same. So, what I typically do to list super fast is once you get your, you know, your default settings, you can go through and make your own default descriptions and whatnot. So once you get your basic template set up, you can go to cell similar, delete your picture. I got to open up my files here. Let's just pull up a random card that we can just list. So here we go. And then I'll drag it over and go like this. All right. So I have our next, um, we got our new picture here, new listing. All I typically do is then I just like, you know, delete which series it's from. Um, this is an SSR card. I would just put something like SSR card. There you go. It's Boa Hancock. Now, for me, it's not really worth it to put her name in the title of the listing because I list in mass amounts. I have hundreds of cards and so you know, my store is big enough that I need to pump out cards to get them sold like hundreds at a time. So I typically do not put the name in the listing. It might be more beneficial to you if they do. So I do a super basic title like this. Um, that's only because I sell a lot. If you're not selling that much or if you're um, just selling, you know, as a hobby, it is better to put her name in there. Um, as a buy it now item, I would definitely put the name in here because the buy it now item listing stays up continuously this auction will end after seven days so it doesn't matter so basically i just you know get, put ssr card here and then next listing sell similar drag the next um image over like that scroll down i just hit list it um good to go
and then I'll do this <laughs> and then I can list really fast because once this is listed, um, honestly, we can actually, we can list it as an example. So we'll list this. So we have our items listed here. So then what I typically do to list super fast, if you have a lot of cards you want to get through basic SSR listing, just open up multiple tabs of cell similars. This is, <laughs> this is how I list multiple tabs of cell similars. It's all the same thing. And then all I do is I just go through, I put in a new picture, scroll down, list. Next tab, new picture, scroll down, list. And I just do that. And then once they're listed, I just click on create similar listing. Boom, 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 boom. I can list like 100 items an hour, if not even like 200. So that's my secret of how I list so much. <laughs> um, I will put the names if they're a high rarity card. Um, it is good to s try and figure out what series title goes in the listing. Like, this is Secret Garden. This is Absolutely Stunning Girl. Um, I at least try to do stuff like that. And if they're a numbered card, you'll want to put, like, stuff like that. But that's stuff you'll learn on your own. Um, Anything else on listings? I don't think so. Yep, see 1099 here. So at the end of the year for taxes, you will get your 1099 from eBay. Um, you will need this to report taxes. Again, I'm not sure how it is for outside the U.S. I just know in the U.S., um, if you want to sell more than $5,000, you do have to give them your uh, bank info and like Social Security and stuff like that. They will not let you sell more than 5000 if you do not give that info to them. So, yeah, that's... Kind of the basics on how to list things. I mean, you kind of have to play around on eBay for yourself to figure out how to list um, items and stuff like that. But it's pretty... Once you learn a little bit, you basically list them. You sell them. Um, eBay does have... Let's see. Is there a listing here? I'm showing everybody's usernames and stuff. Um... So the main benefit to eBay too is that they have their own envelope shipping option. So if you want to sell a single card for really cheap, they have their own uh, standard shipping of eBay standard envelope here. So this goes in increments of one, two, and three ounces. I always, I offer free shipping just to make it easy, but I typically charge the two ounce option because I've had issues with the one ounce option. So you can do whichever you want to do. I'll explain more when I get to the packaging part. So this is the so up to twenty dollars you can send in uh, a card and sometimes and multiple cards in an a plain white envelope. So if your card sells for like five dollars you can just put it in an envelope print off a label stick it on there and you're good to go it's the cheapest option otherwise you're going to be paying first class and first class is like four to four dollars and it's not worth spending four dollars on a card that sells for two dollars right you know but a card that sells for two dollars i pay 88 cents for the envelope shipping you know i don't make much money but it adds up over time so this Envelope standard shipping right here is a great way to have a very cheap service. But beware, this service is crap. <laughs> so it's very cheap. It can be very good, but it's also very garbage because eBay has not like communicated with the USPS on how well, how this actually like works. So the envelope shipping has a lot of issues with it. Sometimes it never gets scanned, so you never get any tracking updates for it, and you're kind of screwed as a seller because they say, hey, you never sent this out. And it's like, yeah, I did. They just never scanned it. That's the m biggest issue with it is that they just do not scan it. Um, it's slower, so you have to deal with it takes a little bit of time to arrive. I had someone even just earlier this week, it was only five days after I dropped it off. It usually takes like one to two weeks. It was five. I dropped it off on Monday morning and by Friday, they're like, where is it? And they opened up like a, I never received this item and wanted a refund. And I'm like, my guy, it takes longer. It can take like t up to three weeks to arrive. It's slow. 
So, you got that. Um, but it's very cheap. You can send a lot of cards very cheap, and it's very easy to package in an envelope. I will show how to package in an envelope and as a parcel here. So, yeah. That's kind of the basics of eBay and how to list and everything. Uh, kind of rambling on. I'm sure there's a lot of info I missed for the eBay portion here. If you have any questions on the eBay portion um, of stuff that I oddly missed, um, feel free to comment below and I'll explain more. Bas I'm just giving you a rundown of like the basics. So with that out of the way, overall, sell on eBay. Listing is pr really easy once you get it down. Um, packaging up, we will go over next here. And I will show you um, how I personally package items and what I think is the best way to do it. So let's get right into it. All right, we are back. So we are going to get into the packaging portion of the guide here. Uh, again, forgive me if the first part I wasn't super clear on a whole bunch of stuff there. I was doing it on the fly. So I did everything I could think of at the moment. Um, this is the packaging part. So I think this is the most important out of because anyone can figure out how to list an item on eBay, you know, right? So I didn't really care too much about that part. I think the packaging part here is the most important because a lot of I've seen a lot of people ask um, and I've seen in like the waifu server and stuff like that. People asking like, what supplies do you buy? What how do you package these like and some things people might not even realize. So I'm going to go over my way of how I packaging, how I package my stuff um, in various different ways and all the ways that I will do it. Um, <laughs> again, it sounds like bragging. I've been told many times in my eBay feedback and I've been told too that they really like my packaging and that's done really well. And so I'm pretty, I guess, proud of my packaging form um, and such. Because I think, you know, I think that helps make customer come back. If you package well, they're going to be like, man, this guy takes care of his cards. And, he, and they come back. If you send it poorly, they're gonna not going to buy from you, you know. So, uh, these are all the different supplies we have here. Some of these you don't need. Some of these you do need. So, you have your, your basic two types of shipping options here. You have your bubble mailer parcels. And you have the envelope shipping, which is what I was talking about. Which is just a basic envelope. Um, I also recommend getting some painter's tape. Uh, this is pretty good. I mean, this isn't needed, but it's it's just an extra little, you know, way of protection. And buyers really like it. I think it's dumb, but buyers <laughs> but buyers prefer it. And it's fairly cheap. I have my fancy purple one. I like getting different colors of tape because it's fun. But um, it's very cheap. So a cheap solution to make it look better, I'll do it. Um, you there's two options you have here for you can use a top loader i prefer using a card saver so these are card savers top loaders i'm you might be familiar with are, are like about the same size of a card um you know it's the plastic rigged thing that you can put a card in i prefer card savers they're a little bit longer than the top loader they have this little tab thing at the top this is just some random cheap brand of card savers too or no this is card saver one they're pretty popular um, so they're a lot more, fl I like that they're a lot more flimsy. This allows for more cards to fit in these top loaders themselves. You can fit about two cards in there if they're normal like this, right? Um, so I like these cause I can fit up to more cards per, um, card saver and it saves instead of doing like five top loaders. I can just do like one to two of these, you know? So card savers definitely rec recommend those over top loaders. So you got your sleeves. I mean, that's I'm pretty sure anyone who collects cards knows to sleeve cards before you sell them, I mean, even for your own collection. Um, I've got two types of cards here that we're gonna go over. These are your basic card size. They're you know the same as like a Pokemon card, thin. Um, the Genshin ones, I these ones are thick. So there is some God of Strike cards that are um a thicker quality like this, as you can see compared to a normal size card. Um, so they base I think of them as like two of like one of these equals the thickness of two of these. So so basically this is like a two cards in one is how I you know analyze it. So I'll be going over my way of packaging thick cards and small ones or normal sized ones. Um 
these are not needed. This is my own little thing that I do. Um, I, I usually put a sticker in every order. Um, stickers are very cheap to get. So I'll typically put like one cutesy little sticker in there. But I, I get a lot of feedback again on my eBay shop that people really like the stickers. So it's just a bonus a little gift that, you know, I pay a couple dollars to get a big chunk of stickers. It's like it's I'll pay that a little bit for that to bring the customers back in, you know. Um, again, you don't need this either. This is just my old little advertisement thing to have basically have my own brand. You know, if you start selling and you actually are being pretty successful, I do think it's a good idea to make your own little brand. I mean, I do Twitch, so I kind of need to have like my own little mascot character. Um, I do think it's a good idea because I feel like, you know, people when they, you know, when they think of if they see this, they'll know, oh, that's the boxing guy. I know him. I bought from him before. Um, if you have no brand, like you have no mascot or anything, um, they'll just be like, who's that buyer? I don't know who that is. You know, but if they see your image or they know your name and everything, I feel like your name's sp my, my name is spread around a decent amount that people know who I am in the community. So I feel like that's a good way to be like, oh, yeah, I know who that guy is. I bought from him many times before. If you say, I bought from Joe Schmo, you're going to be like, who's Joe Schmo? Is he a new buyer? Or something? Is he a new seller or something? I've never bought from him before or heard of him. You know, so I like having my own brand. I think that's good. And a team bag. This is the final, um, after you put your card in the top loader and stuff, seal it up in a team bag for extra protection. So first I will go over how to, how I would ship something in an envelope. Um, so we will get these cards out of here we'll do our the most basic minimum order here for an envelope so we have our cards here let's just pretend that someone ordered these four cards so envelopes you'll have to read on your own the ebay um dimensions that they have for their envelopes again another problem with this is the post office doesn't always accept the envelopes because they don't realize how the envelope shipping works so i've had cards that you know this can only be so thick before they will reject it so i've had orders where it was like a single card like the most the thinnest it could possibly be and they sent it back for extra postage there's no extra postage that they needed you know that's how bad the post office can get sometimes with this so you know you don't want to make you even if it's not $20, like say this sold for $10, but it's too thick for an envelope, like you think it's really bulging out, I would send it as a parcel and take the $4 hit. It's not worth having this returned and having a refund and everything and t getting $0 and wasting money on postage than just getting a portion, you know? So you don't want these to be too thick. So I typically go by my own rule of four. I go by the rule of four. Um, I don't like four cards per top load, per card saver. And I typically don't like going more than four cards in an envelope. So we'll get to that here. Let's just package these up first. So the typical routine, we got our four, our little order, our order here of four cards. We will sleeve them all up. Again, sorry for all the rambling. I'm doing this on the fly, and I am not, like, the most organized. <laughs> so we got our four cards here. All sleeved up and good to go. So, again, by the order of four, I will fit up to four cards per card saver. So we have four cards here. Wow, what a surprise. We can fit all four of them straight in here, and you want to be careful so they're not, like, damaged or anything. Thin as can be. See, a top loader would not fit four cards in there. I saved uh, two top loaders for one card saver. So, we have our four cards. We sleeved them up. We already put them in the top card saver. Good to go. We'll grab our tape. Our fancy little tape here. Purple tape. It's pretty cool. I'll rip off a tiny piece, and I'll put it over the top here. So, I think it's like I said, I think it's dumb, but some buyers like the tape up here because let's say, worst case scenario, I mean, there's four cards in here. It's not going to move. But, like, if a card happens to slide down, the tape is basically there to stop it from falling out, you know? So it doesn't fall. I mean, there's four cards, so it's packed. It's not even moving. But if it was a single card, it might slide out 
It's just an extra way to make sure it doesn't put. So we have, this is our card order. We got it all taped up. It's all good to go. We will grab our team bag here. So then I just put my little thing in here in my team bag. And we will put in our one little sticker for their order. They get their bonus sticker. And I will put in one of my business cards. Uh, my business card's pretty basic. I mean, if you order from me, you probably have a 50 million of these that you just toss in the garbage. But uh, it's very basic. It just says, this is my eBay shop. This is the Mercury shop. My Twitch and YouTube. My little mascot character. That's it. Um, that's all I need. That's, I mean, I'm sure some people find me that way. We rip off our little thing here. We just fold it over the tape up. Now, something I do to make sure, because it can make the envelope a lot more thick than it needs to be, and you don't want it returned, is that if you tape it up just like this, you can see it's got a little bit of, you might not be able to see, but it's got a little bit of air in here. Sometimes it bubbles up. So what I like to do is I like to push down, make sure it flattens as much as it can. Get that air pushed out. Super thin. You know? So that's typically what I will do. Make sure it's flat. Get that air out of there. Because I've had stuff return because it's I accidentally left it like too puffy of air. And then the envelope is way too thick and gets rejected. So there is our uh, little card thing all packaged up nice and neat. You got all your little things in there. All well and done. We then slide it right into our little envelope. The envelopes I use, I'm not sure if they're the best ones to use. I just prefer them because they're a little bit better quality and they're not super flimsy. I use like greeting card envelopes. Um, you can tell by the odd like square size by them. Um, I prefer using these. I don't know. They, they just seem a little bit more sturdier than the typical flimsy envelope that's like three feet long, you know? <laughs> so then you just take your little tape off. Flatten it down so it's done really well. You're good to go on that. Now, because I have my little business thing, I like to be embarrassing, and I put my little sticker on the back just in case so this doesn't rip open. And that's just a way to show that, hey, you got a package from me. So I like to do that as my own little custom sticker. You're good to go. And then you can put your label on the front and throw these little things away. Now, um... I will show you how the labels... Uh, I will create a little fake label here to show you how they work. So what you want to do... Now, you can either print off labels through your, your home printer. You can print them on a normal piece of paper, cut them out, and tape them on. I prefer, and if you're planning on selling a lot, this is way worth the money in the long run. Buy some thermal labels you know a big stack like this it was like this is like 500 labels i think i got it on sale for like 15 dollars or maybe even less so um 500 you know a stack of labels like this they're just they're honestly just a sticker but you will need a thermal printer so you'll want something like this now a thermal printer can be a little pricey to start with if you're starting out. Um, this cost about a hundred dollars, a little over a hundred dollars. This is what I use to print all my labels on. Um, it's as easy as can be. You know, you put one cord in the PC, you plug one into the outlet, you open this. You know, you open it up. You literally just take your. Well, that's the wrong way. Doesn't matter. It's not even on. You just take your little thing here, put it there. And then once you hit, you just hit print to the little label thing. It prints off. You just peel off the sticker and you slap it on there. It is so easy. There's no ink you have to buy. That's the biggest thing. This may cost over $100 to get this and you have to buy labels. But you don't have to spend time cutting out each label. That's what I started with is I cut out each label from my printer, taped them on. That took forever. Um, I don't have to pay for ink. I, it straight up just prints them out. I just take the sticker off, slap it on. It is so much faster. So if you plan on selling a lot or just have the extra money for the luxury, it is way better than doing a normal printer. So I will show you here another trick of mine. So I will create a fake little label um on here. And I will show you uh how it looks and what I do. Okay, 
clean cut. Look at that editing cut right there. All right, so I put a fake label on here. So this is what the uh, stamp, like eBay label is going to look like when you print it off through the thermal label. You got your return address, who you're sending it to, and your uh, like postage up here. So, yeah, once you take it off, you slap it on here. This is what it looks like. You're good to go. However, sometimes if a little trick that I don't know if many people know about that I've been doing to help stop getting these rejected because they're too thick, and then they send them back saying, you need extra postage. Um, one trick that I have been doing, it does cost more, but it's, it's, I think it's worth it rather than having it sent back is an extra stamp. So one trick I've been doing is to stop these. If I think this envelope is a little thick, um, and I feel like it might get rejected because the post office is so stingy about making sure these have to be so, even though eBay says you can fit up to 15 cards in here, there's no way that the post office will accept that. So if I think it's even a little bit thick and I'm like, I don't know, I want to make sure it gets there. I will take one one stamp and I will put it under the little like QR code over here. I'll put it right here because I feel like that kind of I haven't had an issue with it yet. So I feel like it works. <laughs> I have been doing it for months. So I'll put one extra stamp on top of the label I paid for. So, yes, it's 88 cents plus the 60 whatever. Um it's a little bit more in postage, but I'll take it the hit just to make sure it shows up. And I feel like it kind of tricks the system to either this covering the extra postage that it's going to require. Or um, it tricks the system into thinking that, um, oh, this is just a stamped envelope. Because the eBay labels don't technically work well because the post office doesn't know what they're doing. So they just go, oh, it's a stamp. It just goes through just fine, you know. So if you think you're package is a little bit big on the envelope i recommend putting one stamp right under here that is my secret technique that i feel like most people don't know about <laughs> so that's what i do so there is your base this is your most basic minimum order here through an envelope so if we get on to our next one our parcel here this is a very basic bubble mailer six by ten um you can get any bubble mailer you want. I have special ones that say eBay on them. I just don't want to waste one of those. So I'm <laughs> using one of these. We're going to use the thick cards here and show you the difference in how I package the thick ones. So again, same process. We get the cards all sleeved up and nice. Okay. Again, my rule of four. We have a card saver here. How I said earlier that these cards typically are, they're thicker. Um, there's even cards way thicker than this. But since these ones are only slightly more thick, they equal about two of the basic cards. So my rule of four is, is like, this is like two cards, this is two cards. I will do two thick cards in one card saver. And it works just fine. Sometimes I'll be sneaky and I'll put a third one in here if I'm really trying to save on card savers. If it's like a card order of like 80 cards i'll be like all right we're gonna try and cut down on all the supplies here so i'll put like two and two thick cards in here and it fits just fine there's no bending or anything works good we take our old tape on here as it didn't peel the best so then we tape that up just like we did for the envelope now you may be asking, oh, now we just put it in the team bag, right? Like before. Yes. Technically, in these team bags, um, it might depend on which ones you buy. Some of them are different sizes and don't work as well. These ones I like because um, I can fit up to two card savers in one. So instead of doing two team bags, I can put two of these in here and slide it into one thing like this. And then... Personally, for me, for parcel orders, I will throw like a freebie common card in here as an extra gift with the sticker, but I'm just doing the sticker of the show. You don't have to do the freebie at all. That's just something I do for being nice. So I put our sticker, our business card in there. The same deal. We seal it up. Easy peasy. This one's really puffy because it's got two in here, so we want to squeeze that down. So there's like no air at all. Perfect. Now... One more supply thing that I do. If I'm sending as a parcel, I don't think it's a good idea to send it just like this, you know, because there's a chance. I mean, you could send it like this. I feel like it might get bent up. So what I like to do. Is 
is I like to buy these. Little pieces of cardboard dividers. Um, and I, I think this is good because, you know, this protects the card so it doesn't get damaged. Like, if you just put this in here, it might get bent. You can. I like to put them between two pieces of cardboard, like this. Grab our tape again. Get one big a strip. If it doesn't stick together here. And then, I do two wraps around the thing here. We do one this way. Get another little piece here. And another this way. That way, the card is locked in here. If anything happens to it, the cardboard will save it. So it is all nice and sturdy. Then, I'm just good to go. We just take it. We throw it right in here. We don't need to do anything else. Get this. Bada bing, bada boom. Again, another little thing I like to do for my orders here is... Put my sticker even on the parcels. <laughs> Again, you don't need to do that. And it's probably embarrassing when someone buys this and this is on the outside, but I think it's funny. So that's what I do. Same thing. Um, you print off your label for your order. You pay for the postage. You smack it on here on the top, and you are good to go. So, yeah. That's basically all there is uh, to packaging up orders. That's how I package them. There are some people who have, like, zero clue on how to package correctly. So this is a, I feel like this is one of the very big highlights of why people keep coming back to my store and why will, they will keep coming back to your store is if you package very well. I've had I've bought cards before where people will just throw like a single card in a sleeve and like package it in the weirdest way possible and it just does not look good. If you package it like how I do or at least somewhat similar, it gives that it makes you as a seller look like you take care of your cards and it makes you look professional one thing you know i've gotten again it feels like bragging i've gotten big enough that i'm like one of the biggest of the god of story sellers that i like i feel like i need to look professional i like looking professional that's why people like coming back because you know you keep up and you do a good job if you're lousy and you don't do a nice looking job it's kind of like why would i buy from you again you know why not buy from me when I'm the professional looking one? Why should I buy from you if you're going to be lousy, you know? So that's a big thing that I think people don't realize that buyers will come back for is shipping and packaging. That's why I want to emphasize packaging is important. You want to make sure it looks nice and sturdy like this. Sturdy envelope, mascot, your label on here, clean. It's not just a single card in a sleeve shoved in here where this... You know, this envelope, I've received orders where the envelopes are, like, bent half or, like, folded over. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, packaging. Don't sleep on it. You want to make sure you get that done right. So, that's all there is. List your items. Uh, sell them as that. couple little tricks in there. Make sure you keep a record of everything. So at the end of the tax season, you most likely will have to pay taxes on it, depending how much you sold. Uh, so keep track of everything. And then you're good to keep selling from there. And yeah, most of it you'll have to figure out on your own. I'm sure there's a lot of info I left out. If there's any info you have, any questions you have on either packaging, listing, even if it's a, the most base, even if you think it's the most basic of basic questions on how to sell stuff or what you want to know, feel free to ask. I will answer them. You can either comment on the YouTube video of this or you can join my Discord and ask me directly. Um, I'm always on Discord like 90% of the day. So... You can even ask me directly if you want to like talk to me and ask some questions and whatnot. So that is part two of my guide of selling stuff. I'm not sure if there will be a part three. There may be if there's another thing I need to go over. Um, but this should be just the second part and the end of the guide. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Feel free to um, check the description for my Discord. Like I said, you can either ask me questions or just join and hang out with other bozos and other shenanigans there. Uh, you can check out um, actually here on YouTube or Twitch every Thursday. I unbox cards live so you can join me there. And you can also check out my eBay shop is where you can buy these cards. And obviously what I was going over this whole video and me rambling on about. So 
that is it for my second part of the guide. I hope it enjoyed. I hope it helped you out a little bit. Hopefully, I gave some pointers. Maybe some of you are like, this is the most obvious stuff ever. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time.